Yeah, I have, I understand. Uh, but I'm then you're talking about uh, the comparison of quill handwriting and that yeah. now yeah. keyboarding is introduced to be right. yeah, kindergarten that part. and that the availability of more manageable pens will mm -hmm. enable the teaching of uh, the reading and writing not on a slate with chalk or a pen or with a pencil but on paper much earlier, which means that you'll have a much improvement in, an improvement in penmanship. Well, well an improvement in reading, not handwriting. Not improvement in penmanship, but a much larger pool um. of students coming out of secondary and elementary school with a potential for office work, uh, who can who can write the business things and the read business the handwriting? Read the handwriting. Uh, they can read print, but the handwriting okay. is a different skill. I understand what you're trying to say, but I I, I, I honestly sort of disagree a little bit because I think you're you're getting the pens, yeah. You're also getting typewriters, almost at the same time. I mean, well, yeah, but one's answer. cheaper than the other. But um, and typewriting typewriting is simply more. Yeah, but your average village school yeah, well, is yeah. not going to be able to afford to teach every kid to typewrite. They are I'm going to be able yeah. to afford to teach every kid to write with a pen. ballpoint pen. By the time you get them into secondary schools, particularly the business uh, schools, well, what I was thinking you know, of is that you know, for to teach a kid to teach children penmanship, you need to get pretty much every kid a pen. Um, actually, no, you don't. You only need to give every kid access to a pen in the course of the school day, okay. which means that okay. if you have so the classroom a, pen, not, if you have an eight-hour school day divided into half-hour segments, yeah. you need a pen for each sixteen kids for okay. for them to practice for a half hour. Yeah, yeah. and. The way multi-grade schools work is that much of the time the kids are not being immediately addressed by the teacher. They're doing they're doing things on their own while she teaches he or she teaches a different class. On their Which slate. Means, yeah. On their slate or at their on, desk. On their or slate or at their desk. She's yes. talking in a one-room schoolhouse concept. Mm -hmm. Has a lot going for them, really. And the students yeah. well, that's what they have. That's what it is now. Yeah, they, they're not going to consolidate schools no. for a long time because of the transportation yeah. issues. Um, well, I have read that in many respects, the one room schoolhouse is really very superior to our current educational model. Mm. Uh, it depends on the teacher. Well, you, well yeah, that's got it a lot of yeah. fun, but you've got students also helping each other, older yeah. students tutoring the younger ones. No, I, I went to a one, one room, room eighth grade school, uh, my whole mm -hmm. elementary experience. Uh, in many ways, it was more flexible than a modern school system. Well, and those students uh, who want to go ahead can well, no, move Well, flexible somewhere. in other ways. Uh, you, those of you who want to leave can leave because we've hit our time limit, but I'll keep talking on this. Uh, Do you want to keep recording? I started school when I was five. My father having brought to the attention of the teacher in the local school that I already knew how to read and write, and he thought that if I didn't start school pretty soon, I would be very bored in first grade, and she agreed because the idea, you know, of socializing people with their age groups was irrational when you had kids from six to what amounted to 16 in the same classroom. classroom because it was an eighth grade school, but our local school really believed in the concept of slow learners and fast learners. In other words, everybody was going to know the eighth grade curriculum by the time they graduated. And if they were a fast learner, they might learn it in six years and be shipped off. And if they were right, slow well, learners, she'd keep them until they were 16. But they would, by golly, learn it before she let them out of that building. And good um, for her. And, okay, this is something that, mm -hmm. that, that people meet. Uh, nowadays, we have this tendency 
every 12-year-old is a 12-year-old and doesn't matter cutter. their ability, they're cookie just 12. I hate cookie cutter schools. Well, uh, One reason that I'm not teaching well, in the public school right now. Social yeah. expectations. Yeah. Yeah. Their social groups. Well, believe it or not, the public schools in Maryland have discovered, now that it is required that all freshmen take Algebra 1, if they haven't already had it in middle school, that the students who were regularly flunking a one-year course of Algebra 1 do just fine if you spread it out into a two-year course of Algebra 1 and present it to them more slowly with more exercises and practice. They can, in fact, learn Algebra 1. They just can't learn it at the pace that they were trying, they to, were trying to teach them, all yeah. of them. You, you, this is the unreasonable expectation that all students can learn exactly the same rate every subject, and just that's irrational. I it know. is irrational. I, I taught seventh grade special ed in a tiny little county in Utah, okay, Vernal, and uh, I had the seventh grade special ed, which means that A, I was lucky to have a classroom, and B, I was lucky to have any books. Basically, a special ed teacher goes into the hall when they change books and picks up all the thrown away books so that you have something in your classroom because they don't buy anything for you okay so they said you have a math class these are you know these are seventh graders and i had the old books so they were starting on the new books and i just started in and i had kids that were um behaviorally handicapped that were uh, learning disabled that were dyslexic i had two kids that were um mentally handicapped that one her iq was uh, 85 okay and I just started, I only had 12 of them in that class. And I just started them at the beginning of the book and then we started through and did seventh grade math, which is addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, and fractions. And that's all the whole year is. We finished the book before the seventh grade finished the book and all of the kids in my class got A's because they all understood what was going on, which means I surpassed the seventh grade with my students who supposedly couldn't handle the subject matter in most, the classroom. Most people don't realize the American education system is based on a Prussian military model designed to turn out good soldiers. Well, good not, citizens. Not, good, good well, citizens. you can split that however you want, but you know, they want a cookie cutter yes. student. They want them to, to match the uniform. People yeah. that have That's kindergarten farming children. Children Rather than having having turning out uh, uh, pre adults who are capable of of uh, decision of making, analyzing, uh, of critical thinking, you know, of independence. Okay, well, we are five minutes past time. Yeah, and I'm going to turn it off. Need to go get food.